talk a lot on Zoo TV about you know technology and what we can do, and that pushed a certain level of technology pretty far. And on this, it's pushed new technology further. Now, the LED screen is virtually new, and it was very overwhelming at you know at the beginning of the tour to figure it out because. It's got 176 panels in it, I think, and the only we saw four panels up and working before Las Vegas. And we've had some growing pains with it, as well with any new technology. But uh, the entire screen team has been working extreme hours, like sometimes 48 hours at a time, to try and get it right. <laughs> There, where the pixel tubes, the electronics in the tubes of the screen have popped out. Yeah. So there's a team of guys continually through the show in their harnesses dropping down replacing them as they pop out. We've been going through design changes on the fly as it were. Just, you know, we'd see a problem we'd have uh, during a particular show and then try and deal with it. It's, it's quite a clever plan in that uh, the entire wall, which is 62 feet high and 172 feet wide, only draws less than 100 amps of current, whereas uh, a wall 10% of this size used to take about 400 amps of current. So it's, an, uh, it's new technology that is almost the simplest. You know, it's like we've suddenly discovered the wheel here, you know, and everybody's going, why didn't we think of this before? There's three inputs to the screen. We used to have four. We've gone down to three. And so it's basically split up into thirds. And so if I'm putting a single image across the screen, I'm separating that through six channels or three channels of DVE, depending on the footage. You can either have the direct input to the screen or make it smaller, bigger, whatever you want. We colorize stuff. We posterize stuff. We can put multiple images up. We can put single images up. It really is what works with the song and what works in the show. And we try and build the same time that the music's building, we try and visually build and kind of flow with the lights and flow with the, what's happening on stage. I never remember what it is I've done. To be perfectly honest, it goes by so fast. You get into a vibe and you get into a good feeling and yeah, it's all happening and it's great and so you keep going. And I always watch the tape because I want to see, okay, did that really go as well as I thought or could it be better or what's a different angle or whatever because I'm looking at about 20 monitors on a nightly basis and so it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on. Since we started in April, I mean we basically started at the end of April and if you would have seen the show then and come out to look at it now, it's a completely different show. And it's only because of what we've learned works on the screen and just being able to have the time with it and figure it out and try different things. And it's great because I think if you look at the show in another three months, it'll be completely different again. Welcome to the B stage. Beneath the B stage, which is acrylic, there's hundreds of lights that shine up for various patterns. Uh, that lights them up out here because other than the spotlights there's no other lights going on but what we find is that all of the people who are lined up along the barricade here brings them a lot closer to the audience and it's you know it's a cool thing to see because it's, you know at most rock shows everybody's clamoring trying to get as close as possible this opens things up a little bit you know and allows the band to get a lot closer to a lot more people so all we're going to do is time from here which is we call band in the hole so i give the stage manager the show coordinator to me a cue to banner in the hole and he runs a pre-tape and then cues me on the headset to walk the band and then into um show mode during the evening <laughs> involved in the actual show but I take the band on stage. So, this whole area here is swept clean, Jerry takes care of that, there no people in this area at all, stops here, stops at the barricade line, all the band straight through. One of my responsibilities is lead them out there in a boxing style. So in front of us all this time will be a camera, just like
like your camera. Right in front, walking backwards, projected up onto the screen. Always going to have a check before I take the band out that uh, we're secure and the barricade's clear. stage and then back to the office and usually more paperwork. I don't think in fact I could sit through a full show from start to finish. Um, you know, it, it, I, I think I know too much about what's going on. I actually haven't seen the show now in about two months. We have a lot of people that never see the show. We've, we've, like, we have people who were in video engineering last on the last tour that were under the stage that never saw a show, but they were the people responsible for making all the images and everything happen. <laughs> And it's, it's unfortunate. We have the guys that work with the band. They've never seen a show from out front, so they've no concept of what the, the full production looks like. But they're very important to what happens every day. The most spectacular part of the current show is the lemon. The band at the moment are just getting inside the lemon. The lemon. Oh, you can't ask that. This is dangerous being in a rock and roll band because, you know, when you have an idea like, you know, wanting a 40-foot lemon, somebody goes off and builds it for you. The lemon came from um, conversations with Bono mainly, who was keen to do, he wanted to do a Mirabal, um because the you know, single disc attack and everything, it seemed to be a thing to do. And you sort of have to have a mirror ball so that you know that you're at a show, you know. But for me, you have to take it one step further because, um, you know, a mirror ball is still a fantastic thing, but it is just a mirror ball. So, like last time around, we had a mirror ball car, which was really fun, you know. Um, and because the lemon is a YouTube item, um, I figured that a mirror ball lemon, uh, you know, it was time. Part of what's going on in the band's mind at the moment, and part of the creative drive of this, is them saying at this time in their career that they're rock stars. We are rock stars, you know, it is absolutely daft to be a rock star. For rock stars to travel in that lemon and appear from that lemon and sing from that lemon uh, is really a tongue-in-cheek acknowledgement of how silly this is. I didn't get it, and <laughs> maybe I still don't get it, but uh, from an engineering point of view, it's a fabulous piece of work, and that was built by Charlie Cale in London, and it took a long time. The, the actual bogey that carries the lemon is about four and a half tons weight to give it stability, and I see it's, it's locked onto the rail and track system. It can run on its own power through a petrol engine, or it can run by hydraulic power for the show so there's no noise. The lemon has the same area as a, a racing yacht, so that had to be taken into account as well, because when you open the lemon, the last thing you wanted to do is to blow over on top of the audience. And we have, we have our paymasters in there as well, so it had to be looked at very seriously. The show ends and 50,000 people have gone home happy, but even while the show's going on, the crew are preparing themselves for the second half of their long working day. And you give, and you give, and you give Saw the local crew that we use for the loadout and the load-in. It's about 220 in total we'll use from the start of the loadout through to the end of the steel uh, coming out. And as you can see, they're, they're all getting into different coloured shirts so we can identify which department they're working with. It finishes after the last truck door closes for the universal stuff that uh, is loaded up and going out. We've uh, gone from it taking us almost 16 hours to load out 26 trucks. Now we're down to our best time was at the last show at three and a half hours. But setting time records isn't what we're after here. Setting safety records, getting it out in a safe fashion. Uh, we don't care how long it takes to get out because you know, the work will expand for the time allowed.